welcome everybody. Today I'm going to show you how you can build this awesome polished concrete desk complete with twinkling fiber optic lights and glow in the dark rocks. I'll show you step by step how to build this or maybe you can share this video and convince someone to build it for you. All right, guys, I'm almost a little embarrassed to admit this, but this is my office. It's a little bit of a mess. Almost don't even want to show you guys, but this is my desk system. It's a congested mess. And then my wife also has the same problem going on here. The reason why it's so messy is because, well, when we lived in our other house, we were limited on where we could put our desks. So I figured the best thing to do would be to have a little cabinet where we could close it off in our living room and then open it up when when we're doing office stuff so our living room served as our office so this was a this was the solution for that now that we're in this room here we've got a little more options it's been a few years since we've been in this house so we're kind of a little behind on updating our office area but yes this is a mess i'm building a desk so that i'm going to maximize space here and i'm doing the same thing with my wife's area maximizing space. We're also going to lose a little bit of shelf space, which I'm kind of coming up with a solution for. Now the rest of my office is just as messy. So I'm going to clean up this area, get some proper storage going. But this is my main concern. This is why I'm building a new desk is to be easier to sit at and file my papers and everything. I'm going to clean out this filing cabinet and move some of this clutter into here. So you'll see the transformation once we get this desk done, uh, it's going to look way different, way better. It's going to be much better use of space. So, I'm kind of excited about my new desk. going to do here is transfer these dimensions onto this piece of melanin. modified this from my original drawing. I think I'm going to have a little bit of a about a three inch overlap and then the other piece is going to be a three inch overlap so I'll have a six inch overlap between the two sections and the same thing with this side. A six inch overlap between the two sections and that should give me enough room to run my pipes to support on material and then I've got a little cutout at the back or wires and whatnot. Probably the fiber optic, I imagine the connection might go through there. It depends on how much flex I can get out of that cable. I'm just doing a test fit to make sure everything is the way I want it before I build the sides. Uh, this will be the bottom piece and then on top of it, this is going to raise and overlap. It's going to overlap about six inches and raise about six inches. So it's going to be approximately like this when we're done. And the same idea on that side. So I'm actually going to measure from here to here and from there to there and then go in my room and make sure it's going to fit properly before I continue with the build. So after actually measuring this in the room, I think I'm going to have to take about an inch off of this. And I want a total 
length from here to there to be 72 inches. Uh, right now it's about 76, and this is going to be way too close to the door. So I'm just going to do a little trimming, and then another fit, make sure it looks good. It is not the same as what I had drawn out, but it looks like it's going to work out well this way. Alright, so I'm going to make these forms an inch and a half thick. Originally I was going to do two inches. Uh, but after I did a little bit of calculation, that center piece would have been 240 pounds at two inches thick. So I'm going to do an inch and a half. That'll save a quarter of the weight. That center piece will be about 180 pounds when I'm done. Even 180 pounds is going to be crazy heavy. Uh, but it should be good enough for two people to finagle into that room. Uh, the other two pieces are not going to be 180 pounds, so it'll be a little lighter. But... Um, yeah, two inches would have been nice, but I think we'll stick with the inch and a half thick. The forms are three quarters of an inch thick, two and a quarter inch thick strips. Compensate for the depth of the form, and we'll start building them. All right, so this is my Craig dig. It's great for consistent cuts. And I'm gonna get a two and a quarter inch thick. So I don't trust the measuring device on this, plus it is damaged, so I'm going to measure a corner, two and a quarter from there to there. We'll lock that down and do a test, see if that's where I want it to be, and adjust it accordingly. Okay, so that locks that in place. I'm going to do a test. Alright, let's measure that. Make sure that was two and a quarter. Get two and a quarter. I'm going to start by making a few pilot holes for the tree to form. So to make sure I have an inch and a half, I'm going to use my combination square, dial it down an inch and a half, and then just make sure that pops out when I screw it to the form, and I should be able to get an inch and a half consistent all the way around. Alright, I just got done building the first mold. Uh, we've got an inch and a half deep form. I did manage to mess up a couple screws, but uh, to compensate for a misalignment, you just drill next to it. I mean, it's not important. It doesn't need to look good. This is just the form. You probably will make a few mistakes in alignment here and there. Uh, but the important thing is at any end just to get a nice even form all the way around. So I'm just going to wipe all the dust out of here right now. Especially around the corners where the cotton is going to go. I just got this corner tool. It's a nice rubberized corner tool that we're going to seal all the edges with. What would have been nice is getting a contrasting color like black. I got white. That's all I could get. So I'm not going to make a big deal out about it, but it'd be easier to see what you're doing and make any adjustment, any corrections if caulking gets to the wrong spot, if you have a contrasting color. But yeah, I'm just going to just do all the corners, all the edges. I think my neighbor's always doing something when I'm filming. Great. Don't know what that's all about. All right, and then I'm just gonna use that corner tool to just spread it around. Clean up the excess with a rag.
See, and there's always an airplane flying ahead too when I'm when I'm filming this. And the contrasting color would help picking up all those little mistakes. White is horrible. White is horrible to work with. There are better tools on the market. Uh, there's a what looks like a ball bearing on the end of a stick. That looks like an easier tool to work with than this. Uh, but this works. In the next video, we'll go over wiring up the fibers and pouring the concrete. When that video is ready, there will be a link above and in the description below. Stay tuned for a little bit of bonus content that might help you with your project. Originally, I was going to use the same forms twice, trying to get the pieces flipped over and get a mirror image of the concrete. Uh, but uh, my plans didn't go quite as smoothly as I thought it was going to. Keep watching to see why that didn't work out for me. It might save you a bit of frustration when you're trying to pour your concrete top. Alright, so I've done the first set of concrete for concrete um, tops and now is I'm going to start the second set. Uh, so yesterday I built a new set of forms. Uh, I have deviated from my original plan because originally I thought I was just going to reuse the first set and save a little bit of money. However, I decided to just build new ones since uh, this material kind of swelled a little bit during the uh, the setting process. It, it swelled a little and we got a little bit of warpage happening on the original forms. So I just figured I'd just build a new set. Just easier all around. Not cheaper. Well, not easier, I don't know, but it's just going to be a better product. So I'll just spend the extra 30, 40 bucks, whatever it costs me, in a couple hours of time. Uh, I've already taken sealant and sealed the edges. Um, I did have a blowout here, so not a big deal. We're going to work around it. I think the way I did it last time was worked out well, so. Um, I'm also not going to be too concerned about an awful lot of dust on these. I mean, last time I tried to get all these little bits off. Sure, there's a few bits here, but uh, um, I mean, I saw how much I had to sand, how I have to polish, and I don't think tiny little flecks of dust are really going to affect the final outcome on this. Especially after I have to sand, I grant, I had to polish off quite a bit of material, and um, I had to fill in a lot of air pockets, anyways. So I don't think getting every little chunk of dust off here is critical. That's the only thing different. One thing I forgot to mention is. Um, I only drew one set of plans, I didn't draw two sets of plans because one set of forms is going to be a mirror image of the other, so I had to be mindful. Uh, although the shape is the same, I had to be mindful of where I was going to um, attach these brackets, these edges, because uh, to get a mirror image of this one, uh, instead of these being attached on this side, this would have been attached, just overlap the other side. Um, so I had to think, uh, stop and think. If this is the top, if this is going to end up being the top, I mean, is this going to be sitting properly in relation to the desk? Don't go thinking that this is the top. And here again, this is going to be your top. 
once it's all flipped over and sanded. And just stop and think that this is the top. The next video covers probably the most important steps of this project, which is wiring the fiber optics and pouring the concrete. Again, when that video is ready, it'll be this one right here. And there's a link up here and a link down below. Thanks for watching.